Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be diving into the command column grep right after this. If you've used Linux for any length of time, I'm sure that you've had to use grep at one time or another to go find something that's out on your file system. But it's really a command line utility that's designed initially to search plain text files. However, it does, so if you're doing a, a search across many files, there is, a, there is an option that you can turn on to have it search into binary files now that's default behavior is to ignore binary files and not to search them. But it will go through your file system. It can go through many, it can recurse over directories. It can recurse down through the trees and it can locate any file that matches a certain pattern that you're looking for. But where did it come from? So it was originally written for Unix by Ken Thompson uh, and it was written for the PDP-11 in assembly language. The PDP-11 didn't have a lot of memory. I'm thinking about 16K of memory or so. Um, yeah, it wasn't a lot. It wasn't a lot. So uh, prior to that, the only way to search was through ED. And ED was the line editor that existed on Unix before Vi uh, came along. But it had to bring in the file entirely into memory in order to search it. And so with 16K, that was your, you had considerably less than that <laughs> that you could use to, do, to uh, use for your files that were being loaded in. But Lee McMahon was trying to do text analysis of the Federalist Papers to try to determine who wrote them. Kind of a, kind of a, a analogous to maybe a front runner to pattern searching today uh, in uh, AI or pattern recognition. Um, so he, Ken Thompson told him, give me a day. And that's exactly what it took. He took a day. He took the code out of ED and turned it into a command that could run on the command line. And Lee, I presume, went off and did his analysis of the Federalist Papers. It, the, the reason, as you can see here on, on this particular one, Philo Publis was the author of the Federalist Papers, but in actuality, it was many, many different authors. And uh, what he was trying to do was to analyze, based on the patterns of writing, who actually would match? Who who would be closest to uh, the person, the type of per that particular person, so that wrote it, whether it was Hamilton or or who it was, whoever it might have been. But anyway, let's talk about where did this this funny name come from? Where did Grep come from anyway? So the only way I can really show you that is to uh, go to a full screen here, and let's just go. Let me just show you. So. ED still exists, believe it or not, in Linux. Uh, at, at least the, the GNU flavor of ED does. Um, and yeah, you don't want to, don't want to, don't, I don't want to refer to it being uh, the Unix version. No, 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 it's not. It's definitely the GNU ED. But uh, um, ED was written for Teletype, uh, and it was it allowed you to edit files that were, you, you know, you didn't have CRTs, you didn't have full screen editors, you just had to go a line at a time, and uh, you know, and edit the file. You had to have some way to do it. But I only did it twice, used ED twice on a Teletype. It was a horrible experience. Uh, we did have CRTs when I started. I'm not quite that old, but uh, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna do. An, I'm gonna edit my password file, and I'll show you where the name came from. So I loaded it up into memory. Remember, everything has to go into memory, uh, and it's taking 3,022 bytes to do that. So I think that's right. I don't think it displays free memory. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. But the the command to actually do the search is called global. That's G, which means I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a pattern. A regular, regular expression. And I want you to search for it from the first character of the file all the way to the last. That's what global stands for. Then you give it a separator to say, okay, I'm done with the command part of it. Now I'm going to give you the regular expression and I'm going to look for bash. And then once you find it, what do I want you to do with it? <clears throat> I want you to print it. And that's exactly where it came from. Uh, the G is the global, the, 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 
part in between the bat where the bash is sitting is the regular expression or R E, and then the P is the print. Correct. There you go. That's where it came from. So uh, <laughs> I got to admit, it's been a long time since you used ED, but you never. It's one of those things you just never forget. It's like riding a bicycle. So I'll leave this here and I'll go back to the presentation for now. And <clears throat> we'll come back to this later. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit more about about grep before we get started. Give you an idea of, of the kind of how it, it came about and some of the different flavors of it. So the original man page had a date, I think somewhere around March the 3rd, 1973. That was in Unix version 4. Now, that's the research version of Unix, not the, not the programmer's workbench. So we're not talking in, in the 80s here. We're talking back in the 70s. But um, I know there was some exchanges on Reddit with Ken. I, I remember reading them that uh, uh, one, some, one of the authors of a blog was looking for the actual date because <clears throat> there was some dispute about whether or not March the 3rd was right or not. And so he was trying to find out, and so he sent a, a note, and Ken answered. And Ken said, I don't exactly remember, but I kept that command private for a long time for my own use. And then... And released it uh, uh, during the Unix version four. So, the release date is accurate. That's that would be around March the third, nineteen seventy three. But it wasn't the date it was created. I, I don't think he ever gave an answer as to what date it was actually done. He probably just doesn't remember. Uh, <clears throat> GNU grep came about uh, in order to create the GNU flavors of the uh, Unix utilities, and that was written. I think his, his name is Mike Heracall. And he wrote this command in 1988. Now, there's a mention in the GNU bulletin, and you can go read them. They're still online on the GNU project page. In January of 1987, it actually mentions that grep uh, existed uh, under the GNU umbrella. And it was like, huh? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe somebody else was working on it. But uh, according to Mike, it, he didn't write it until the summer of 1988. But that is the version that you have. And of course, it's been updated and extended. Uh, this is one of the major differences between the GNU grep and the original grep is that uh, the original grep had actually th many different flavors. There was grep, which was using the Ken Thompson regular expressions. And there was egrep, which was the extended regular expressions, and that was done by AO. One of the, the A in AUK was the, was, uh, the author of, of uh, added those extensions into grep and called it egrep. And there was fgrep, which was, uh, I think that's fixed uh, strings, which allows you to do a, a better match on patterns of strings within the, in the file. But anyway, Mike was also the, he's also the author of the AMDV uh, virtualization extensions for the x86 CPUs from uh, AMD. So he's, he's had many, many contributions into this, this world of ours that we all live in. Uh, James Howard developed a version of grep called free grep, and the concern was that, um, you know, because of you had to give uh, the, the licensing uh, requirements are different between, and we talk, I've talked about that before. And there was some concern, you know, I mean, BSD got sued a couple of times, and, and, and so they were, they were kind of didn't really want to have that happen again. So they wanted something that was operational under the BSD license, which is. Uh, you know, it's more lawyer friend. Well, lawyer unfriendly. <laughs> I guess I should say is it, it's really not as inviting to, to uh, lawsuits as the others are. So, um, anyway, enough of that. So, <laughs> free grep is just called grep, and FreeBSD was the first to actually include it. I don't know the exact year. I'm, I'm assuming it's after 1999, uh, and then OpenBSD followed in 2003, and NetBSD the year after in 2004. The, the major differences uh, between the two is uh, that GNU grep includes the regular expressions from Perl in it, and free grep does not. That's, I mean, that's basically it. I don't, there might be others. There might be other things in, in, that are different, but uh, essentially, uh, it's, 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 I don't know about you, but I, I, don't use, I don't use the Perl extensions all that much anyway. So let me go back to the full screen. <clears throat> and let's just go explore a few commands and grep and, and see what we end up with here. So 
uh, I will be using the Linux version. I mean, that's what this channel is, is Linux. So uh, I could I could go back if you guys are interested in do one and then do a comparison between the two. But let's just do grep by itself. So, but if I just did the command by itself, it says, oh, you can put some options in. You need some patterns, and then you need a, uh, optionally need a file name with one or more files because it will do more than one file. For today, I'm going to be looking at. I'm going to be searching through a file called War of the Worlds by. Uh, 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 by H. G. Wells, and and then I'm, I will we'll just try some of the different kinds of patterns that you could have it look through. So let's just start with. I'm just going to give it. Oh, I don't know. Let's try uh, now. The default behavior for grep is is it is case sensitive, but you can fix that. Um, then you just give it the name of the file or more than one file. You can do that. So let's just let's just see what we get here. Oh, you know what? I think I want to do the search over on Fedora because I'll, I will actually get the my characters highlighted because my bash is set up to do that. So let's do. The same command. There we go. Makes it a little easier to spot them <laughs> when they're highlighted. So it, it'll go through line by line, and then it'll print out all the occurrences of Mars. But I don't know if I, yeah, if I leave off, let me show you an anomaly of the search, is that it is looking for patterns of text. It's not looking for words. So it's going to match Martian. It's going to match Mars. And probably any other thing that begins has the words N A R with a capital M in it. Uh, if um, so, that's what I get for the for that right there. Um, but that doesn't tell me where those the, those occurrences are in the text file. But what if I want to know what line it's on? I can just put a minus N, and then I'll get the line numbers that's showing up on the left hand side here. Now, if you're doing multiple files, all you'll get here is the name of the file that it occurs in, and then you would have to do another grep to, to find the uh, actual line number itself. I don't know if there's a way to do it both. Maybe there is. Uh, but what if I don't want, you know, this is coming up with a pattern match on capital M. But what if I don't want that? So I'm going to leave the N on, and I'm just going to add the I flag, which says ignore case. And I, let's see if I get anything different. Get any lower? Yes, I do right there. Marveling, remarkable. So then it starts to find the word, uh, the the pattern match, no matter what, if it's upper or lower case that I didn't have before. Um, what about if I want to find? Do I have any words that occur at the beginning? So you, you can look for where mar appears, and I noticed that there are some in here. So this, this the, uh, the, the carrot, uh, or the hat, either one that you want to use, uh, will show that um, MAR has to exist as the first three characters of the line in the file in order for it to select the text. And that's what it did. It found these. Um, I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll try it. What if I want to find uh, a, a, a word that has an N in it? Now, it's probably going to be quite a few of these. But you'll notice that the dot actually says, show me the character in front of it. I can also say, show me the character behind it. So, and you can you can add as many of these as you want <laughs> to, to you know, get enough <clears throat> of the match that shows you, you know, that these are the, so it helps me understand what, maybe what characters we're using in. Um, <clears throat> And then there is a, this is what egrep added. So egrep, yes, you can, you can run at egrep by itself, but you'll notice it's just calling grep again. 
Uh, I don't. Let's let's try that. Let's see if let's see if it's smart enough to include the extensions. Uh, for uh, the extended pattern match and and if it doesn't this will not work so I'm going to look for a, a character well, let's say uh, M or mm, Earth E for Earth let's try that and see what we get oh yeah it'll work so in this case again it's looking for uh, it, that pattern match to occur on the first line so yeah, it is smart enough to do that. Now, if you just use grep, this will fail. You don't get anything, right? Unless I explicitly tell it to include the extended. So yeah, that's it. so you can just use F E grep if you want to do that. Uh, you can get, I mean, there's, there's books about that thick that will go through uh, the regular expressions and teach you everything you want, ever wanted to know about regular expressions. They are quite powerful. You can, you can combine search terms. You can have it do unions and sets and all kinds of things with it. So, yeah, there's, there is an awful lot you can learn about it. And, and you know, the... One of the greatest people that, uh, that in, in my humble opinion, to program any kind of regular expressions, what had to have been uh, Ken, Ken Thompson, and, uh, and his, his, his knowledge of regex was uh, legendary. But anyway. So I'm just going to touch briefly on FGREP so I tell you why it was written. So uh, the problem is, is that GREP can't recognize regular expressions or special characters uh, So it, within the file. So if you're looking for, you know, like, uh, I don't know, if you're searching UTF-8 documents and you're looking for the beginnings of maybe the escape characters that bring in the UTF-8, Grep's not going to find those. It doesn't know how what to do with it. But fgrep does. That algorithm does, and so that's one of the big differences between the two. Uh, but I am going to show you one other one, uh, and that is this one, pgrep. So <clears throat> we've been talking about. I didn't show. I, I guess what before I do that, let let me let me just do a simple. So you can, yeah, you can look through uh, all the all the files within your directory. You can have it recurse from the current directory all the way through your file system using the minus R command. But let's look at pgrep for a second. So pgrep, oh, it, it doesn't really tell me anything, does it? So let's do a help. And pgrep actually will look in what's in memory. There's also a version for networking called ngrep. There's zgrep, there's agrep. I mean, there must be a hundred different variants of grep. Uh, well, maybe not a hundred, but there are certainly more than a dozen of them that do things. But this is meant to look for patterns that are running. So it's looking at your process table to see matches uh, in to help you find things. So how many times have you have you done this? And then look through and look through and look through and look through. I mean, that can get pretty lengthy on a busy system. It might take you a while to locate something. So here's pgrep. So I want to find system D. There's all the process IDs for system D, but I don't know what those are. So I'm going to do a, there's a minus L command, which does the, the long list. And this will show you that system D is running at process one, and then journal is at 620, and so forth. And then I have two children here at 2525 and 7218. <clears throat> there are versions of pgrep that allow you to send signals, interrupt signals, to the processes that match the pattern. So if you wanted to, let's say you had a bunch of Apache or Nginx servers up and running and you wanted to bring them all down, uh, you can use pgrep to uh, go out and send a, a hub signal to have them come down gracefully.
if you wanted to shut them down and do maintenance on them. So it's useful. Um, there's also, you can have it do, uh, I think it's, uh, mm, I'm going to have to look. It's been too long since I've used this. I think it is A. Yeah, it's A. But it's been a while. So let's go over here and I'll change this to an A. And this should show you the actual command line uh, for that. And then you can also look at what user is running it. Uh, oh, and what group? I think somewhere. Yeah, there's the group. There's the user ID. So you can pattern match if it's running under a specific user ID. And there's just lots and lots of different things that this will do. Uh, if I do a, well, let's say I'm, I'm on, I guess I better do it for, for, uh, for Fedora. Uh, let's see. Let's see how many matches we get. Let's just see. How many different forms of grep are there? Okay, so A grep, DW grep, there's a V grep for Golang, N grep for networking, V grep, X grep. This one does XML. And it's, it, every time, and one for PDFs and one for emails, so you can pat, you can pattern match through all that stuff. <clears throat> That's really all I had today, and. Uh, um, So I, I mean, I would encourage you to go out and explore some of these. Uh, I'll probably, if there's, if you guys are interested in me doing one on the network one, I'll, I'll do that uh, and show you what that one's all about. But uh, yeah, some of this, it's so a lot of these commands are just incredibly useful, and the power that you get on the GUIs, uh, they're just not. It's not there. I'm, I'm sorry, they're just not there in order to do this kind of searching. You just don't have the power there to do it. So don't be afraid of the command line. Give them a try. Give Grep a try. It's uh, it, I think you'll you'll find it pretty amazing. And like always, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you again real soon. Bye for now.